And we are uh, really happy and excited to be welcoming uh, James Bowman to bring the morning message this morning. Uh, I know most of you all have probably met James. He's a senior at Milligan College. Uh, he's been serving us uh, for the last several months as um, an intern here at First Christian Church. He's been um, helping out a lot with worship, worship planning and worship leadership, but he's also been helping out uh, a lot with the youth group. And so he's been um, a great asset to our congregation in the time he's been here. Uh, he's got a lot of talents, a lot of gifts, uh, and it's just been uh, a real pleasure to get to know him better and to get to work with him. And um, again, we're, we're really blessed that he's uh, willing to come and um, share the word with us today. So, uh, James, if you want to come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody hear me all right? Uh, I'm soft-spoken as it is, but again, Todd, um, I humble myself uh, as always. Um, Any time that a pastor lets me get behind the pulpit and preach, uh, I don't feel worthy enough to do so, but I appreciate it. Uh, right off the bat, I want to say how much I've enjoyed being here in Irwin and getting to know most of uh, all of you all and those that I haven't really got to know. I know you're great people. Uh, this church is a loving community, and I've really been blessed by it, especially with the youth, uh, and to see their zeal and the way that they're growing. Uh, that's a smile on my face. Uh, but as I was trying to think of what God would have had me preach on, uh, sin kept popping in my head, and that's a touchy subject, and there's not too many messages on sin itself. But it's something we need to be reminded of. Um, but in the youth group, uh, we're going through core, um, and each letter stands for like, creation, our sin, uh, redeemer. And I'm not going to say the last one because I don't want to give away. Uh, <laughs> but we discuss sin, and I'm going to ask you all if you want to share what we discussed what sin is. You're not too shy. No, get some glares. I'm going to ask you all. Uh, feedback would be nice to give me a little more easy going. Uh, anybody want to say what sin is or what you think sin means? It goes against the will of God. That's good. Anybody else? Wrong doing. Uh, Dr. Lee Magnus, who is uh, one of the Bible professors at Milligan, uh, a man of a lot of wisdom, and you pass by him and you're like, uh, <laughs> but he, I took a problem son class with him, and he gave us a definition of sin that, in a way I've heard before, what we discussed, sin kind of beats around the bush, but I've never really heard it exactly this way. He said that sin is wanting something that has already been given to us. And going against God's will or wrongdoing is really the consequences of sin. That sin in its essence is wanting what has already been given to us. God has given us joy, He's given us peace, He's given us comfort, love, um, but yet too often we go and we branch out in places that we shouldn't. And we look whether it's with lust or money or whatever it may be, we try to fulfill whatever is missing when if we would just accept God for who God is, we'd be satisfied beyond measure. Uh, so I have a key text. Uh, I don't know how many people take notes. Uh, but it's Ephesians 5, 13 through 14. And you can find this on page 829 of the Pew Bible. I looked it up. So I'm going to read right starting at uh, chapter 5 and all the way through verse 14. It says, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love. Just as Christ loved us, he gave himself up for us as a, as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or in any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, 
which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. But let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord, having nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Those are tough words to swallow. Uh, not even a hint uh, of immoral acts or coarse joking. Not even a hint. But yet, we are sinners. There's more than just a hint on a daily basis in our lives. And we struggle with sin, wanting what's already been given to us. So what do we do with that hint that we're not supposed to have to be able to inherit the kingdom of God? Uh, one must realize that there's nothing that we can do to stop sin, young or old, and young and old. Uh, our life is going to be sinful. Uh, God sent His Son for that very reason, knowing that. But if we can fix our mind, if what's done is darkness is going to become light and Christ will shine on us, there must be something within our sin that is good, if I can say that. Uh, it's a question that I don't really ask myself much, but how can God work within something that God despises most of all? As we said, you know, God turned his back on Jesus because of sin. But yet, throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, God is ever-present within sin. And it's kind of a paradox. Uh, but how is that possible? When we sin, however it may be, when we do something and we get so broken down, we cry out to God, we wonder, why is this happening to me? Why... As I'm striving to live a life pleasing to God, finding out what's pleasing to God, it seems every step I take to go forward and taking three more back, trying to catch up. How is God pleased with me? And how can God save someone like me? You did have a lot of people are too ashamed of their past or what they've done or what they may be going through right now. Just like Job, God said that there's no reason to, to tempt Job or to put harshness on him and sin in general, but yet Job bore through it all. Uh, and this probably going to sound funny, but such a drastic change, but the gays are vocal band, you all. <laughs> Not a shame. I like them. Uh, but I was watching an interview with Bill Gaither, and he was interviewing with Jason Crabb of the Crabb family. Yeah. And there's a song, Through the Fire, Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jason said that pretty much the same thing I'm saying is when we look at sin and we wonder how can we be going through something, the only way to often get around it is to go through it. And so I want to read some of the lyrics, the chorus of the song, and uh, just listen to it. It says, He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered a victory without fighting. He said the help would always come in time. Just remember, when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in, just hold on. Our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again. I'm not saying that sin is perfectly okay, that it's a good thing to go sin, don't worry about your sin. I'm just trying to say don't get so burdened about your sin. Understand that you're going to sin. But understand that God often has to take you through your sin. You, 
It's not just you can wish upon a star or nothing. You know, just pray a prayer and God will make it all go away. Sometimes you have to deal with the actions. Actions have consequences. But often God works with those consequences to redeem you and to show you what you are to Him. Julian of Norwich, uh, which is a mystic writer that we've been reading about in church history, uh, I have a quote here. It says, He, God, allows some of us to fall more heavily and more grievously than ever we did before, as it seems to us. And then, we are not all wise, think that everything which we have undertaken was all nothing. But it is not so, for we need to fall. And we need to see it. For if we did not fall, we should not know how feeble and how wretched we are in ourselves. Nor too should we know so completely the wonderful love of our Creator. For we shall truly see in heaven without end that we have sinned grievously in this life. And notwithstanding this, we shall truly see that we were never hurt in this love. Nor were we ever of less value in his sight. And I wanted to mention all that before I mentioned the title of my sermon. Uh, I thought of the, the bearable truth and that in order to have grace, we must first have truth. The truth of ourselves, who we are, needs to be what is brought about first. And then salvation through Christ is made possible. Truth is what we are. We are sinners. Although we are all made in the image of God, which God says is very good. Always keep that in mind. We are still sinners. And only Jesus can change that. God sent Jesus to die on the cross that we may be reconciled back to Him. As the hymn says, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Rowan Williams, who was Archbishop of Canterbury, stated that there can be no reconciliation between God and humanity until they see one another face to face. God and humanity must meet in truth, must be unveiled to each other. And so God unveils his face to us in Jesus. The glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, as St. Paul has it. And the light of his presence shows us the truth of ourselves, strips away our deceptions and illusions. Painful as this is, it is bearable, because that light is shown in the face of a perfect love, a perfect acceptance, a faithfulness that violence and death cannot destroy. Truth makes love possible, and love, may I say grace, makes truth bearable. The story has said that God is faithful even when we're not faithful. Um, the whole point of this message overall sin is something we face. We are sinners. We're going to fall no matter how hard we try. It's often when we try to take control that we fall even more. Fall more. But God we're never less in his sight, his love never fails us. And so, if I can, just a simple word of encouragement. No matter what any of you are going through in your life now, understand that through it all, God does have a plan. God does have a reason for everything. It may not be a reason why something should happen, but through it, God will have a reason with the outcome of it. And that is all I have to say.